Hey, hi everyone. Welcome to this short video. I am Dr. Moez Kakiani from Mumbai, India. Today I will be talking to you about a product that is designed and manufactured by MIK Dental. It's called Prep Cage. Friends, globally, one of the biggest hurdles that most dental laboratories face is that of the fact that the work that comes to them often has reduction which is less than desirable. This is classically on the occlusal surfaces of posterior teeth and the palatal surfaces of maxillary anteriors. In such a situation, the technician gets caught in a dilemma. What should I do? Should I fabricate the prosthesis in the space that is available? Or should I call the clinician and ask for more room to be provided? How often have we heard from our technician saying, uh, Doc, clearance thoda kam hai? What do we do in such situations, friends? Unfortunately, in most of these situations, we simply tell the technician, you make with what I've given you. I'm the boss. What will I do? Adjust. Unfortunately, as we all know, this adjustment happens at the cost of grinding the antagonist enamel, and we know that's not the right thing to do. Friends, we are all aware that dependent on which prosthetic material that we choose, there is a certain desired amount of tooth that needs to be prepared. How do we normally check for clearance? I remember reading in textbooks that we're supposed to use utility wax, have the patient bite into it and then measure the thickness of that wax with the help of calipers. I don't remember doing that ever. What have I done for years? Something very simple. I would take my mouth mirror, I would put it into the buccal vestibule, I will ask the patient to bite into maximum intercuspation, I will close one eye and then try to look for the space that I have created. In my head I'm thinking is this space adequate or do I need more? Now this is very crude, it's very abrupt. There are two things that happen here. First is when I'm preparing the tooth myself, I become myopic. I may think that there is adequate amount of clearance when there is actually less. Second, every tooth as we are aware has inclined surfaces. So when I'm looking from the buccal aspect, the palatal inclines will obscure the view thereby not showing me the actual amount of clearance that is uh, available. Do we have a better way? Something that is more predictable? Absolutely, friends. Uh, I would like to show and present to all of you all the product which is called the prep cage. Let us now understand what this prep cage is all about. So prep cages are these four food grade silicone strips that are completely autoclavable and provided in this convenience to use case. The concept behind the designing of this case is so that each gauge could be used and placed back into its respective vertical slots thereby allowing for ease of use. When helping you understand the designing of this, let us look at that from two different perspectives. First is the thickness of these gauges and second is the actual shape. With respect to thickness friends, uh, the four gauges have been given color codes. The yellow one is one millimeter in thickness. The blue one is 1.5 millimeters in thickness. The two millimeter thick gauge is green in color whilst the 3.5 millimeter gauge is pink in color. So that's the coding that has been given with respect to the four different thicknesses of these gauges. Uh, let us understand the design or the shape of these gauges from a slightly different angle now. Right, with respect to the shape, the first thing that I want all of you all to acknowledge is the angular nature of the gauge. Uh, this shape friends allows for the gauge to be used even when you wish to check for clearance on the distal most tooth in the oral cavity which otherwise would be difficult in the presence of the patient's cheek. The next thing that I want to bring attention to is the width of the table. First, appreciate the fact that this area is wider. This is about 10 millimeters wide. So this portion of the gauge is supposed to be used when you are checking for the clearance on wider teeth, essentially molars and central incisors, maxillary and maxillary canines. 
uh, at the same time there is this extension here which is slightly less wide this is about seven millimeters in width so this is ideal for use with maxillary lateral incisors and all premolar teeth there is a small little tip extension that has been given here this tip extension allows for the same gauge to be used even for mandibular incisors which we know are essentially the smallest teeth in the oral cavity which means friends the very same gauge can be used to check for clearance on all the teeth in the oral cavity with utmost comfort prep gauges are used with the feeler gauge concept. On this typhodont, as you can see, a mandibular first molar has been prepared. This tooth has been prepared to receive a PFM restoration. We are aware from previous videos, friends, that a PFM restoration requires 2 mm reduction on the functional cusp and 1.5 on the non-functional cusp, which is what the desired amount of preparation has been achieved here. Once you know that you have the amount of reduction that you feel is necessary, you go ahead and confirm this with the help of the prep gauge. First, I'm going to use the 2mm prep gauge, which is green in color. We place it towards the buccal area. We have the patient bite down into it and we simply try to tuck through. As you can appreciate here, I'm easily able to slide the gauge out even whilst the patient is in maximum intercuspation. This tells me that there is adequate amount of buccal reduction. Now if I were to try to push this gauge further, you can see it folds up, but it does not go further in. This is because the lingual aspect has not been reduced for 2 millimeters. To quantify that, I'm going to use the blue gauge which is 1.5 millimeters. Now as I push through you can clearly appreciate it slides right into it and I can easily tuck it out. It does not give me too much resistance nor does it slide out. This again helps me confirm that we have exact amount of reduction on the buckle 2 millimeters and on the lingual 1.5 of a millimeter. Each gauge has its own set indication. The 1 mm gauge which is yellow in color is used to quantify the amount of reduction achieved on the non-functional cusp for metal free restorations, classically for PFZs and Emacs restorations. They are also used to quantify the amount of reduction on the palatal surface for anterior teeth for the very same prosthetic materials mentioned. The blue which is the 1.5 mm gauge is used to quantify the amount of reduction on the functional cusp for metal free restorations and also the non-functional cusp for PFM prosthesis. The 2 mm green color gauge is used to quantify the amount of reduction on the functional cusp for PFMs whilst the last gauge which is the thickest gauge in the system, the 3.5 mm pink gauge is used to quantify the amount of reduction in situations where antagonist teeth are prepared simultaneously. Let's say for example you prepare the upper and the lower first molar together, it is at that time you use a gauge which is 3.5 millimeters in thickness. The role of prep gauges is not just restricted to use for posterior preparations, but they also play a significant role when quantifying the amount of anterior tooth reduction primarily on the palatal aspect. With the prep gauge in place, if you were to have your patient bite into maximum intercuspation, you can at static occlusion appreciate the amount of reduction achieved. But more importantly, you can have your patient make dynamic mandibular movements such as protrusion, right lateral or left lateral, thereby quantifying the amount of reduction achieved during these translatory movements, which means they help you guarantee the amount of clearance is adequate throughout the range of anterior guidance. These can also be used to quantify the amount of proximal reduction achieved for anterior teeth thereby allowing for more predictable aesthetics in this zone.
although prep gauges work beautifully in telling us whether the clearance is adequate or not what they unfortunately cannot tell us is where is it that the reduction is less what we could do in such situation friends is use indicator sprays or paints that are available in the market to help us what i prefer to use is what you see on the screen here this friends is from the company bausch it is called as rt spot 2 and it's uh, an indicator paint all you need to do is use this like a nail paint and apply it onto the gauge what the company states is once it is dry it will leave a three micron film all you do once it is dry is you have the patient bite down into this and most importantly friends have your patient make all the excursive movements which means forward back right lateral and left lateral what this will do is it will selectively tell you the amount of reduction that you need to do further in dynamic mandibular movement and not just static wherever the reduction is less what will happen is paint from this gauge is lost where is it transferred correct onto the biting surface of the tooth which means wherever it marks selectively you go ahead and reduce those areas which means never will you have an issue of uh, a high point because of lack of clearance and more importantly you will add quality to the work and predictability so friends that was all about the prep gauge something that allows for you to quantify the amount of occlusal and palatal reduction that you have achieved each time you do it works fantastically the best part about the gauges of course is the fact that these are autoclavable which means you can use them reuse them and reuse them use them till you lose them well, absolutely friends uh, if you enjoyed this video uh, please like uh, do subscribe to our channel so that you can be updated of regular updates from us and most importantly do speak of our products with your friends and colleagues until we meet again wish you all a happy day and a happy life bye bye